Nope, it's not Halloween already. As much as I dislike all of this, I may actually dislike it more when it's on my 3D prints. So, with this video, I'm going to dig into... Oh, nope, mm -mm, nope, next. Well, filament stringing is a problem. It's weird how sometimes I can print two different models on the same machine with the same filament in the same day and one of them will be perfect and the other will have some of those little cobweb strands all over them. Spider webs! And while there could be some actual hardware issues that could be causing all of this, there's also things we can do after we print to make things look a lot better. Okay, so first, a couple of easy things you can check. Checking your nozzle for a clog is an obvious thing to do first. Try extruding a bit of filament out and watch how it behaves when it comes out of the nozzle. Is it going straight down to the bed? Then you're probably okay. Is it curling around and staying real close to the nozzle? Well, you might want to clean it up with a brush or maybe some filament made to clean all that up. But if you still have a problem, you probably want to replace that nozzle. Next, I just want to mention something that plagues me like spider webs. Anyway, that's filament moisture. And I can almost guarantee that you've all heard something about this. And I can also pretty much guarantee that at least a few of you right now are rolling your eyes because, quote, it's not that big a deal. It's not a big deal. Well, I live in the South and with the humidity inside and outside a constant nightmare, I can tell you, for me at least, it is a pretty big deal. Especially on most of my printers since the filament's out in the open and it may be something you need to at least be aware of. It's really up to you on how you store your filament, but I can tell you what I've done. I store all my filament in gallon zipper bags with a lot of desiccant, and also I invested in a filament dehydrator. I've tried vacuuming the air out, but I tend to go through a lot of filament, so it gets really tedious. Well, if you're still having problems, you'll want to take a look at your printer calibration. When's the last time you ran a full setup? On newer printers, that's actually pretty easy. Just hit the button and wait. But on your older printers, you're gonna wanna run through the whole gamut of stuff that will make sure you have the best chance at a great print. And that includes auto or manual bed leveling, checking your Z offset, and any other calibration tests your printer might have available to you. But what if you did all of that and you still have streams? Well, you may need to dig a little deeper. Determining the best print speed for the filament you're using, as well as retraction distance and retraction speed, well, those are all things you want to look at next. But don't try doing everything all at once. Just run one test, make some changes, run a print, and see how everything goes. Making too many changes at the same time is never a good idea. Probably not the best idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Most have built-in tests to help you determine your best print settings. These are some of those tests that a lot of you beginners hear about that you don't understand, so you tend to skip what you uh, don't understand and just accept what you get. Yes, they're time consuming, I know, but it's all part of learning. Besides, you may only be one test away from some really awesome prints, and isn't that worth it? If you'd like me to dig a bit deeper into some of those calibration tests out there, let me know in the comments along with any questions or other ideas. Okay, so you either did all of that, nothing worked, or you decided to skip most of it because you need your print right now. Well, no problem. There are definitely some things you can do to help your stringy prints after you print it. And one of the easiest, quickest, and most nerve-wracking things you can do is to simply put some heat on your print. Now, I've tried a number of ways to do this. Uh, when I first got started, I used a hair dryer. Unfortunately, that doesn't really have enough heat, at least usually. It may work a little bit on PLA, but not really anything else. And to keep us both from getting in trouble with your significant other, I'm now explicitly telling you to not use their hair dryer, okay? Okay. You could get me in a lot of trouble. A better option is actually a heat gun. I got this one pretty cheap out there at Harbor Freight, but there's plenty to choose from. Just run the heat over the little strings, being careful not to stay in one spot for too long. If you don't get all of them on the first pass, move away and come back a few seconds later. The biggest problem though that you're going to have with a heat gun is you don't have great control over where all that heat goes. 
Which brings us to the next step up from a heat gun, a butane torch. And now it doesn't need to be all that big, but you'll definitely want to make sure that you have an adjustment for the flame size. This one was pretty cheap and it works great, at least when I remember to use it. Now, no matter what method you choose, I do recommend that you take it slow and low when you're getting started. The chance of melting a part of your print is pretty high if you're not careful. Want to guess how I know that? They melted. Two more things you can do to help out your print if you've got a lot of strings on them. I mentioned this a while back in one of my 3D printing tools videos, but I think that other than a decent scraper, a deburring tool is something that should come with every 3D printer. It's easy to use and pretty cheap, and it's great to clean up those edges inside and out. Also, a good piece of sandpaper is well worth the investment. I found these little sanding pads to be really easy to use and just right for small prints. If you're just getting a few strings off of it, uh, be sure to use a pretty high number grit. The higher the number, the smoother the sandpaper. You don't want to hit that PLA with 80 grit and end up causing more problems than just a few strings. And if you're doing more than just a few quick swipes on your print, you should probably wet down your paper first to reduce heat caused by friction. Well, whether you're putting heat to your print, deburring it, sanding it, whatever you do, it's always good to practice first on a purge tower or a print you're getting ready to throw out. You don't want to mess up that three hour print or 30 hour print. There's a lot of videos and articles out there talking about what causes stringing and how to get rid of it. Some of it may work for you and some of it probably won't. If you've run across something I missed or you want to add to the conversation, let us all know in the comments. Just another step forward as we all learn, create, and amaze.